Whoa, check this out guys. Onto this phone, I have installed Windows 11, the actual Windows 11 that you use on your PC. You probably have a lot of questions right now. Let me clarify this. It is not running virtual machine. It is not a remote desktop. It is running natively Windows 11 on my Android smartphone. And by the way, you can able to install any of the PC application into this Windows 11 phone. You can install any of the PC games into this phone. This is how you can install Steam and use it to play PC games. And this is all possible due to a project called Project Renegade. If you have watched our previous video, I have already showed you the detailed step-by-step -step installation process of Windows 11. And believe me guys, running this onto my phone was quite a lot of blast. I mean just imagine, it has 8 core CPU, 8 gigs of RAM and with the help of its integrated Adreno GPU, you can able to play some AAA PC game titles onto a phone. You can check those video right into the i button also in the description below. Today's video is gonna be even more crazier than this. So now that you can able to play PC games onto your phone, but let me ask you one thing, how practical it is. If your phone can able to run Windows but can't able to make calls then what's the use of this phone? So can you able to make calls from this Windows 11 smartphone? Yeah I know benchmark numbers are quite surprising but numbers don't always tell the actual thing. I mean how stable it is and even if you are brave enough to handle all of these problems can your eyes able to handle this such a tiny UI? Today in this video we will discuss about all this so without further ado let's get started. Now technically it is running windows but whoa now just take a look at this windows interface. Everything looks so tiny and as a result you suspect something is wrong. I don't know like how realistic it would be to play PC games onto such a tiny Android phone. But I mean like you can do it so why not. Okay guys so let's see how it all works. Now running Windows 11 on an Android smartphone it is not as complicated as you might think. Before we go into any of the detail let me introduce you to the Project Renegade because all of these things are possible due to the Project Renegade and its developers. You know, Microsoft has already released the ARM version of Windows 11, which is compiled for the ARM processor architecture found in many Android phones. But if you install Windows 11 on Android phone, there is one major issue. The thing is that uh, with this, you can't able to run the existing Android operating system. And second thing, we also need to run Windows which is difficult for phones as it's not a common generic process. And of course, the second issue will be the drivers. Well, phone manufacturers do not provide Windows drivers for their phones, obviously, because they do not develop in that direction. And the thing is, if you don't manage to get the touchscreen up and running or maybe the 3D acceleration, how can you possibly game on this Windows 11 phone? And luckily, to solve all of this problem, we got a project called Project Renegade, which I mentioned in my earlier videos as well. This is an open source project developed by few enthusiasts like you and me and truly thanks to their efforts we can able to run windows on our android phone obviously from the supported list of devices in order to select a proper phone that can run windows 11 now project renegade does not support all the phones available you have to be a little bit picky on to choosing your phone so let's get to the most interesting part which phone I'm going to use? Well, here in this video, I'm going to choose OnePlus 6. Well, the reason is quite simple because it is one of the best supported phone available for this Project Renegade. Originally, I purchased this phone for a really affordable price like $160. Well, actually, that's a lot of money for a 4-year-old phone, but it's totally worth it if you want to run Windows 11 on your phone. Talking about other phones, well, you can use other phones that have Snapdragon 845, but in my opinion, Opinion, guys if you want to avoid all the hassles and you just want to get it up and running just choose oneplus 6 or oneplus 60 by the way if you are looking to buy a new phone there are links given in the description below so you can check that out now because qualcomm uses its own processor in some of the windows laptops some drivers are available that you can use in this windows 11 phone but i mean not all the drivers are working flawlessly however with the work that is done by project renegade it works surprisingly well now here almost everything is working we have a full gpu acceleration without any hitch 
touchscreen works flawlessly also wi-fi and bluetooth are working and usb ports are working as well but what about your sim card is that is working even the lt modem works so you can normally put your sim cards which is quite fascinating uh, that means you can carry a windows 11 phone in your pocket that can still make a call also you can game on it not just any ordinary game but AAA PC game titles. We can also adjust the brightness of the screen, able to lock the phone, also the sleep is working. The only issue with the driver right now is that audio does not work. But you know guys, there is an alternative. We can easily connect headphones via USB or alternatively with Bluetooth and that way it works. And there is also issue of classic applications from Windows 11 ARM powered PCs. Currently, Windows can run x86 on ARM processor without major issues. Both 32 and 64 bit applications are supported. And to be honest with you, it works surprisingly well. The majority of the problems simply behave and run as we would expect normally. Also, if you fire up your Steam, it can able to run large number of games. It's no wonder if you take this into your school, college, you can be the most geekiest person in the world. Well, anyone looking at such a small Windows 11 interface will surely say it's a cute and uh, relatively functional. You can see switching between the running applications and background programs is surprisingly good. Wow, that scrolling is even more smoother than I thought. The pages are truly that much fluid. I'm tempted to say that it is even working much more better than Android at some times. And of course, like nothing is preventing you from connecting a USB Type-C hub and gaming accessories. And well, not just the gaming accessories, USB devices are endless. You can basically connect anything to your Windows 11 phone. I mean, we can expand the storage of this phone by connecting a 1TB SSD. We can connect a fancy gaming keyboard. Also, there are game pads. You name it, possibilities are endless. We can even plug in a mouse and a keyboard to use it as a miniature PC. So like you might be thinking, it is just running Windows 11, right? Just bare enough. No, well, I just completed various tests for you. And let me tell you guys, the raw performance of this phone is just unbelievable. I mean, truly, if you have seen my previous videos where I showed you that it can run AAA game titles like Tomb Raider, and even more interesting than that is uh, this Cinebench benchmark. This is an x86 application and through the magic of emulation, it is available on ARM platform. Well, now if you want to see how well it runs AAA PC game titles like Tomb Raider, GTA 5 and many more, do check out this video right over here. Here in the emulation section, you can see it gets around 330 points. These results are comparable to a second generation i5 PC. So it's a really amazing score for the size of this phone. Obviously, the scores are telling me that this phone will not give me like a mind blowing performance. But still keep in mind that when it comes to the operation of Windows programs, it is specifically compiled for the ARM processor and it works much better and does not bog down by your CPU. Okay, so well, how good is the gaming performance? You can truly see the gameplay is perfectly fine and totally playable. The Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 is a red herring. It's, it's not a difficult game, but it runs smoothly with weaker clicks, for example, there are no issues. Now, what about The Witcher 3, the best game ever? <laughs> Let's try it. Well, but running it is not as simple as you might think. I have to run this game in a windowed mode. Uh, in the menus, it was activated normally. I had to increase the scaling in windows to 100%. So take a look at these icons. Whoa, they are barely visible at all. Anyway, uh, good. Anyway, let's see how well this game runs. Well, actually, I'm curious, will it even work and for how long can it able to sustain? Hoping for the best, fingers crossed. Uh, let's hope it works. And indeed, the Witcher is working. And here it is, it is working. Well, now if you take a look at the CPU consumption, it was really underutilizing. It is working, however, not perfectly. So I will show you the CPU consumption, what really it is doing. So here you can see the CPU is being really underclocked at this point, probably because it is an 64 bit application. But you know, that's how x64 works. But hey, like at least the game is not fired. Don't even pay attention to CSGO. The lowest settings and 
and as you can see it is getting about 30 to 40 fps in the menu now obviously like uh, it has a reasonably high resolution and because it is slightly higher than full hd and unfortunately i can't able to set any lower resolution than that time limit 5 minute and but i'm a bit messed up uh, that did not invite anyone that does not hold water with me so you can see it can able to play a total of 20 to 14 frames per second as we realize how many things are going beneath the surface the entire translation of this x86 to arm 64 uh, we will have to keep in mind that we are talking about a very high resolutions in the neighborhood of full hd and yes you must admit that this is truly impressive for a smartphone but perhaps we will assassinate the pleasant not to mention that this is an amateur project which a few guests are encouraging each other and truly later in the point i realized that phone was getting so much hotter i should have connected cooling black clips for the phone but nevertheless it can able to play the games at the most basic level all of this is fine if you go deeper it is stupidest blunder i have ever witnessed in my lifetime skyrim cannot even start because the audio device is not detected skype will not start because i do not have the sound card seriously i mean you'll see that i have connected logitech usb headphones with the sound card and i believe skyrim will no longer have an excuse to play around and what it is working silky smooth you can see that it is getting about 40 frames per second and at time it pulls 40 frames per second at some times and okay there are some frame drops here and there but what you know this is so much surprisingly good you can see that it is totally bottlenecked by the cpu itself but still it is insanely impressive that skyrim works so well <laughs> talking about the horizon uh, it will most likely do not even start but it wouldn't be for myself I didn't check it for myself. Oh no, this can run anything. Once I heard that this can run anything, but probably not. Now yes, GTA 5. Well, GTA 5 was recently ported to PlayStation 5. I'm wondering where's the phone port now? But no worries, we got our Windows 11 to the rescue. Our phone should be able to run GTA 5. Let's see. Whoa, not even a one frame per second. <laughs> well, anyways, uh, it is most likely due to the fact that the single core performance of the CPU is not so much great. That is the reason why we have outcomes like this. Due to those tiny little CPUs, you can truly see how well this game is running. And you can truly experience the CPU is bottlenecking the entire hardware of the phone. So, since all the cores are to 100%, it can't utilize the remaining usage of the GPU and here you can see the Adreno GPU is staying at 1%. Given how much of the translation is going on in the background, it looks pretty good given how big these characters are. For example, we have a PS3. <laughs> Damn, like after all of this test, I have few thoughts in my mind. Today, I believe that we can all agree that Windows Phone was a total failure because Microsoft withdrew it. But oh boy, when I was using this phone with Windows or Microsoft earlier, such as Windows 8, I began to wonder he was not anticipating the future. Because I can imagine that if Microsoft adapted this Windows interface to the small little phones, a little more users would be able to switch to the such an ordinary desktop. Windows 11 phone sounds like a very niche product that suits need of very limited people. Talking about some advanced user, it would be really great for system enthusiasts and people who enjoy tinkering with their phones. And it would be incredible to have such a tiny functional PC in your pocket. Now of course this isn't very groundbreaking because of other Linux distributions that we can also run on our phone. Now after seeing all this, if you are still interested to install Windows 11 on your phone, then I would say you are a true enthusiast. Nevertheless, this is a fascinating discovery and I'm sure a lot of people will ask me in the comments, how can I install it onto my phone? Well, if you want to install Windows 11 onto your Android device, do check out the video right over here where I have explained all of the installation details in a very great depth. Also, if you have a lot of questions regarding the compatibility, whether your phone is supported or not, do check out this video where I have explained how this project Renegade works in a detail. Now, I hope this video was quite helpful for you. If that is the case, make sure to hit that like, share this video, subscribe to our channel. And this is Kedar from How to Guys signing out.